the mystery of the Mo'o reptilian. On the coast of Hilo Bay on Hawaii Island, near Liliokalani Gardens, is a statue called Ho'o Malu Le Upena Ki Lo'i. I believe this is open representation of idol reptilian worship. I believe this is a statue of what the ancient Hawaiians called a mo'o, a humanoid reptilian or humanoid aquatic reptilian that sometimes fought with and was sometimes worshipped by native Hawaiians. They are said to inhabit caves, lava tubes, ponds, streams, rivers, and waterways of Hawaii. Now the statue is less than two feet in height, but stands on a square pedestal about three feet tall. It is made of bronze, so from oxidization has turned green. The figure is what appears to be a humanoid fishman, kneeling on its right knee, holding up a net of fish with webbed hands. There was controversy behind this statue. It was installed in 2021 during the pandemic in Liliokalani Japanese Gardens. Many people complained about it. In my opinion, it's evil, and they had a right to complain. I think people instinctually felt how evil it was, because so many people complained to the council members, they moved it out of the park. But instead of getting rid of it, they just moved it 300 feet away to where it is now. But my question is, if the people didn't want it, why not just get rid of it? I think there is an evil intent and evil agenda behind the statue that is meant to be in plain sight. The plaque says it was built by Henry Bianchini and donated to the park. The artist is not local, but he says he donated the statue to the park and that he was inspired by a 19-day journey on the ocean. So again, why donate something that people didn't ask for and that people didn't want? Even though he's not Hawaiian, he gave this creature a Hawaiian name. It is named Ho'o Malule Upena Kilo'i, which supposedly means metamorphosis or a transformation of a net fisherman. Now, I don't know if this artist is who he says he is. I don't know this artist personally. I don't know if he's a Satanist or a Luciferian. I don't know if he's a Freemason. I don't know if he works for the government. I don't know if the artist is just a mind-controlled puppet or aware of any other meaning than what he says it is. But whether the artist knows it or not, I'm 100% sure that this statue has a connection to the reptilian agenda. I've been studying the Mo'o reptilian presence in Hawaii for a few years. And in my previous videos, I've talked about other locations on the big island where Mo'o legends originate. In my video, Maui Kills a Reptilian at Rainbow Falls, I talked about how the Hawaiians, with the help of a giant man named Maui, helped to kill a mo'o, which was preying on humans in the area. They pushed it off the waterfall and they buried it under rocks. This proves the point about Hawaiians piling rocks on top of mo'o. In my other video called Why Was Captain Cook Killed at Kayale Kekua Bay, I mentioned that there is a nearby sacrificial heiau, which is called the Hikiao Heiau, and a mo'o pond where ancient Hawaiians would give human sacrifice on the heiau to appease the mo'o that would come out of the nearby pond. This proves a connection between mo'o sacrifice and heiau structures. Recently, I viewed another spot on the Kona side attributed to the Menehune, which were over 10 giant mounds of megalithic lava rocks that weighed tons. These ruins are near Kahalu'u Bay and are called Kapa'o Ka Menehune, which means Wall of the Ancients. One of the 10 structures found there is Hapai Ali'i He'eao. And I believe that this heiau was used to ritualistically sacrifice, most likely child sacrifice or newborn baby sacrifice. 
there is a nearby sign at Kahalu'u Bay that acknowledges that human sacrifice was committed here. I believe the reason why is that these He'eal are really burial mounds. And the human sacrifice is intended to have the blood seep down into the rocks and feed the bones and flesh of the decaying corpses under the stones. King Kamehameha built his He'eal with Hawaiian slave labor and used it to ritualistically sacrifice and kill the last chief of Maui in front of everybody, reenacting that cultural ritualistic sacrifice that was practiced by the ancients which Kamehameha was trying to tie himself to. I've talked about these Giants Mounds in other videos like the one titled Giants Mounds and Lemurian Ruins in Hawaii. In that video I showed a good example of an ancient megalithic site that predated the Hawaiian immigration and which date back to a global culture of megalithic builders which were destroyed in a cataclysm which we call Noah's Flood and the sinking of Atlantis. At that site, the bodies of at least 22 Ali'i were said to have been buried under those mounds. We know that these mounds represent a global culture that used megalithic burials, mounds in other locations in the world, such as Egypt, Mexico, Italy, Ireland, and even Russia, China, Indonesia, and all throughout Polynesia. So what we have here, as we have in all those other cases where human beings creating civilization near the remnants of a destroyed antediluvian civilization and worshipping their giant progenitors. Just like the burial mounds in North America, many of the skeletons found in these places were of giant stature of over seven feet tall, just like Kamehameha and the biblical Goliath were said to be. Is it possible that there are even mo'o lizards buried under these mounds and not just giant pre-Adamites? In the north of Kahalu'u Bay, there is a he'eau called Kuemanu he'eau, which is said to be an altar to a Hawaiian fish deity that is buried under there. The Hawaiians would offer to the altar to have good fishing and good surf. So, is there or was there a mo'o reptilian buried under that mound? I've talked about much of this in more depth. And if you like these stories, I have even more Hawaiian mo'olelo about Hawaiian mo'o, native reptilians to Hawaii. It is available for free download on my website. It is a free PDF over 700 pages and section 6 about reptilians and mo'o in Hawaii begins on page 35. I have exclusive photos and explanation of the bigger picture. And it has over 7,000 downloads as of this date. Get it while it's hot. I believe that the Hawaiian mo'o humanoid lizard legends are based in reality. I believe the Hawaiians were seeing a humanoid reptilian creature that was associated with the water, possibly an aquatic reptilian, in the way that crocodiles or marine iguanas like to swim and eat things that live in the water. I believe that is why these reptilian sightings were often near waterways and ponds because that's where these creatures like to swim and eat. And I believe that some people may associate them with fish men or even a turtle. But I do believe these are an intelligent race of beings and not animals. And they don't have gills, so they're not fish. They are not actually mermen, even if they have been associated with mermen in other cultures. I believe they are air breathers and have the ability to walk among us like the Hawaiians and other cultures say. I believe they represent just one of multiple different types of races of intelligent reptilian humanoid species that 
co-inhabit the earth with us secretly. I believe there are multiple types that live in and around the water, just like we do. I believe that there are types that live deep under the earth and in desert, mountain, and forest locations. I believe they have different agreements with the human elite and world governance that surround them. I believe many of their sections are sectioned off in national parks and far away from city limits. But I think sightings occur when there is an overlap of territories. I believe the elites and highest levels of the military know about it. The shadow government and highest levels of financial institutions and the elite know and work with these races under different agreements to keep us separate and controlled. I think that these are ancient native reptilian species to earth that predate mankind and are descendants of what we consider dinosaurs. I believe that these intelligent dinosaur people were referenced by all religions all across the world and were called serpents and dragons in the Bible. Every child around the world was told when they were kids in every culture what dragons and giants were in their local mythologies because dragons and giants are real. The word dinosaur was not even invented until the 1840s. So, I believe before the word dinosaur was invented, people commonly did use the word dragon to describe a race of intelligent reptilians. What if these beings that ancient Hawaiians and ancient humanity dealt with in our legends are still alive today? What if they're still doing deals with our human elite today? What would that look like? Would it be under treaties? Would it be under business deals? Contracts? And what would they be trading today? Are intelligent reptilians in Hawaii still working in agreement with the local Hawaiian government? Do they claim ownership of the waterways? And do they charge rent for people to use their water and inhabit their native lands?